Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is April the 10th, 2024, and we are continuing our study on the Feast of Abib, which is also called the Passover, which we know is the Passover feast. And we are, um, I'm attempting to show that there were no pilgrimages to, there was no pilgrimage to Jerusalem for any of the feast days. So let's go ahead. We left off at 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 1. Let's go ahead and get started. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year Solomon's reign over Israel in the month Ziph which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. This is not interpreted correctly. Hold on. Let's pull up scriptures for all. Okay. And he is becoming in 80 year and 400 year and it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. That part is correct. We can skip down. Oops. Okay. So this is the part that's problematic. Um, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month Ziph, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. But what it actually says is, in the year the fourth, in the month of Ziph, which is the month the second, to the reign of Solomon over Israel, and he is building the house of house for Yahweh. What this says is that in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, he began to build the house in the second month. But what this says, in the fourth year and in the second month of Solomon's reign, he began to build the house of Yahweh. The fourth year and the second month of his reign is not the second month doesn't necessarily mean that it's the second month. The Ziph is actually the first month. When you look at the definition and you look at the clues, this is going to be the first month. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Month. Ziff. Ziff equals brightness, the name of the second month of the year corresponding to April or May. Probably from an unused root meaning to be prominent. Probably from an unused root meaning to be prominent. That's the definition right there. To be prominent. Properly brightness. Now, let me read this. Properly brightness. Compare H2111. That is figuratively the month of flowers. Ziv corresponding to Ijar or May. Now, I looked everywhere for this. <laughs> I don't know where that word came from, but April or May is what it's saying. <clears throat> Maybe that was the old pronunciation in um, Hebrew. I'm not really sure. I couldn't. I tried pulling it up and I don't. I tried the Google Translator. That's what I tried, and I couldn't find anything. But I don't know what language it is, so it could be anything. But anyway. When you see the properly here, it's telling you that this word right here <clears throat> needs to be used in conjunction with what comes after it in order to determine what what it means. It just doesn't, maybe it doesn't have a proper word in the English language. So it combines words with descriptions in order to give you a definition. So we don't need to try interpret, to interpret all of this. We don't need to do that because be prominent is the best definition. And we're going to look this up. Prominent. 
someone who is prominent is important. Something that is prominent is very noticeable or is an important part of something else. So when you consider months, unless you're applying some sort of personal preference, maybe for the weather, a birthday, or a holiday, something similar to that, there's really only two prominent months. The first month and the last month. Everything else is typical. Everything else is just in between the first and the last. So there really is no way Ziff can be the second month. It can't be. It has to be the first month or it has to be the last month or it doesn't match the very first definition that's given as prominent. What's so prominent about the second month in the year? Nothing. <laughs> no one cares. Unless you have, you have to add personal preferences in order to change the meaning of that month. In brightness, as I said, we would have to take into account the following words in order to interpret that. But I did look up brightness. There are, but to be honest with you, nothing really fit. I looked this up in the older dictionary, the one that I posted in the last study. Um, illustrious, glorious, cheerful was one of the words that was given, gay. But this is the seventh definition here for this word. Brightness of itself wasn't meant to be used as the, as the interpretation. It was supposed to be combined with the month of flowers and you were supposed to be able to discern what the word means. Which I wasn't really able to do. To be honest with you, it could be that they just left this definition in when they alternated the equinoxes they just made that definition corresponded to it would be September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April April and then they just left it in there April, May so anyway but that's okay because prominent is enough it's, it's the first month of the year that's what it is. But what we do know is that it's not the second month because there's no indication at all. You are literally just you're literally just guessing. Because the second month doesn't match what's written, number one, and it doesn't match the description. The only months that are prominent are the first and the last. So let's move on. By the way, we only have three scriptures. I didn't realize it at the time. I wasn't thinking. In the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid in the month Ziph. And in the eleventh year in the month Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof. And according to all the fashion of it, so was he seven years in building it. Now, I saw a video where they said month um, that this I, I think it said this was the month and this month here corresponded to the zodiac signs <laughs> I'm not sure I couldn't make anything of it so I'm just gonna skip any type of explanation for this 3391 right now we're just gonna look at the actual information that pertains to this study as far as Ziff and the month of bull <clears throat> so let me pull up my Hold on. Let's pull up Zet, my astrology program. And I plucked in a date here. We're not going to use that date, though. I'm going to pull up Calendex and we're going to calculate a date. So I put in 1904. I just, I didn't want to use today's date, so I just put in any old date. So I have 1904. So let's pull up. You know what? Yeah, let's pull up 1904. So the next, you guys can't really see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. So southward equinox, and then the next full moon. So this is the first month. And then I'm just gonna hit this repeat button here. The second, third, fourth, fifth, 
sixth and then the seventh month because if Ziff is the first month then Bull is going to be the seventh month. I tried by the way I really tried because if we look I tried to make it into the eighth month I did because when we look when you okay the first month is Libra it started September the 23rd I think it was I should I should do this again so we can see let's go previous southward equinox so September the 23rd is the equinox and we're gonna go to the next full moon so the first full moon is September the 24th it's gonna be the next day but that's okay so we're looking at um, Libra as the beginning of the month and I don't know if you guys care to see this or not but I'll show you here Libra the scales and then this is the symbol and then it's the scales as well we don't need that but here is Libra and so this would be our first month and instead of counting to the eighth month, we're going to count to the seventh month. And the reason why is because of the definition. So let me click off of this stuff real quick. And let's look at the definition for the eighth month. I tried to make it into the bull symbol. <laughs> this right here. I couldn't make it work. I couldn't. It's the seventh month each time, and the date varies. But I could not. I could not make it into the eighth month. So let's look at the definition. Bull increase produce, and this is why I thought it would be the eighth month, the eighth Hebrew month corresponding to modern to modern November December. But of course, we have to add seven months to that: November, December, January, February, March, April, May. In June, May and June. So, no, April, May, six months. November, December, January, February, March, April. Hold on. Six months. It's on the seventh month, so we're going to add six months. February, March, April, May. So, if it was okay never mind we're just gonna count the way we would count from the first month into the seventh month and it's um, March and April well that's not right it should be one month behind this so September and September October and November and then we count out six months October November December January February March April okay it's April that's what we're looking at <laughs> I had to go backwards one because it's the eighth month and we're only counted to the seventh from the seventh month and then count out the six month in or six months in order to get where we needed to be I made that way more complicated than it should have been the same as H944 in the sense of rain, April showers, bull, the eighth Hebrew month, bull. But let's look at H944. Produce outgrowth, produce of the earth, food stock. And it was because of this definition that I really thought it was going to be the eighth month, but it's just not. It's the definition of rain in the sense of rain is really what is really what um, the definition is supposed to be so anyway let's go back to our calculation here so we pulled up this is our I don't recall so next southward equinox next full moon you guys can't see 
next full moon and I'm just gonna hit this again button here so that's So that's the southern equinox. That's the first full moon. So we're going to hit this six times. So that's the second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month, sixth month, and seventh month. We hit it six times in order to go from the second month to the eighth month. You'll, you'll go out six months. Second. 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and that's what we did and we ended up on April 9th and when we look at our chart April 9th is Aries it's the 7th month 2nd month, 3rd month, 4th month 5th month, 6th month and then the 7th month so Bull is not Taurus it's Aries I don't know if they changed the name. I don't know what they did. But it's not Bull. It's Aries. It's the first day of the second month. It's the first day of the seventh month. And we know it's the first day because they don't give a date. Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all fashion of it so he was seven years in building it but they had to change this because they moved because they created the Feast of Booths on the seventh month so they changed this from the seventh month to the eighth month they changed this <laughs> from the first month to the second month and then they were able to change the day that Solomon actually celebrated the opening of the temple from the Feast of the Passover to the Feast of Tabernacles which is not a real feast okay you can go back and watch that maybe it won't be so hard to follow if you rewind it um, why did I need this I'm not sure but okay I don't think we need this We'll just go ahead and move on. We have one more scripture left. So let's go ahead and look at that. Ah, Numbers 9. This is where they had the second Passover, the keeping of the Passover during the second month. I'm pretty sure this is going to turn out to be false too. Not as sure as I am about the Feast of Booths though. Not as many errors in this, but I found some, so I'm just not certain. But probably yes. Speaking to the children of Israel saying, If any man of you or of your posterity, posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Here is what happened. <laughs> there were men that were unclean because of a dead body. The men that they said were unclean because they had been defiled by a dead body could not keep the Passover. Moses told them to sit still until he found out what to do. Moses comes back and completely unprompted. Moses says you can keep the feast the next month if you were unclean by reason of a dead body. He was prompted for that. The unprompted part is that he added in, or if you're in a journey afar off and you want to keep the Passover to the Lord, you can keep the second month. Now, how is it that if you are ordered to keep the feast, how is it that you can just say, well, if you're far away, you don't have to keep it. Not that important. Hmm. Then he goes on to say, <laughs> If any man that is clean and is not on a journey and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. So if you don't keep that feast day, 
It doesn't matter if you're sick. <laughs> you could be half dead. But if you're clean and you're not on a journey, then you just get kicked out of the whole religion. There was no pilgrimage. It just didn't happen at all. No one kept it. No one did. And that's why when Jesus was there, that's why only 4,000 people or 5,000 people would gather, gather out of the millions that were supposed to have been there. Millions of people would have, been, have accumulated into that city by the time Jesus was there. If you include all the little villages that were around. But only 5,000 would show up for one of the most important days of the year. No, it just, it, it wasn't required. And there was only one feast. Hold on. Let's take a look at it. The lamb was selected on the 10th. Then, of course, he, Jesus was arrested. There was three days, that, three nights. All of this is going to make up the Passover feast. And then Jesus, of course, died. That was the symbolic representation of the lamb being sacrificed. And then the next day is the day of our redemption. This is the beginning, of course, of the millennium. It's also the day when um, Jesus returns to receive us. And then, of course, but that's a different calendar. On this calendar, after that, is the wave offering. And that's our week. That's our feast week. I will leave it at that. I have some other things to say, but I think you can wait until later. I think I've done enough. I will leave it at that, and I will talk with you in the next video.